Okay, hopefully we're good there. Let me do... Uh-huh. Let's go to here. And... And... Here we go. Turn this off. Got it. Carriage of no return, hello. And everybody else, let me turn this to live chat. I don't know how many people are gonna come in, but just so I don't miss any comments, although I will miss many comments. Here we go. Which of these credit cards have you heard of? BMO, Eclipse, Rise, Visa, Scotiabank, American Express, Capital One, Smart Rewards, RBC, Ion, Visa, none of the above. How about I just skip the survey because I don't use credit cards. There we go. Robert, Pet, Joy, Irene, Justine, Wise. Wait, are you, are you the Netherlands Wise? Deborah, hello, Glenn, Glenn. My brother's favorite viewer. Was that a sneeze? Yeah. Ava sneezed in the background there. Alex. Uh, Vicky and Elizabeth. Just wondering how Moose Breath painting is. Is he finished? I haven't done anything since the last Instagram live. So what you've seen at the end is all I've done. Yesterday I went to work. So I was, uh, I just went there from like noon to eight and I came home and then I wasn't feeling so good. So I didn't do anything else. And I probably wouldn't have done anything else on that painting anyway. I, I have another project I'm currently working on. Okay, I need a cloth here. Thank you to whoever sent us these dish cloths. We still use them. Hello, Amy, Freddie, Robert, Cindy, Shelly. Char, Daryl, Daryl Scott. Hello, Josh. Sorry. You just got a trim. It's all good. Well, I meant to just get a trim. I meant to. I already told this story on Instagram Live, but I'll tell it again now. Okay. I went. Okay. So, if you watched my last vlog, you heard there that I had a doctor's appointment to go to, right? So after I dropped off the painting to Mr. Shock, I went to the doctor's appointment that I had. And uh, uh, it was base. it's a basically a, oh shit, did I miss my follow up? No, it's Tuesday. Okay. 11, 15 hours, right here. Okay. Anyways, I went to, it was a sleep clinic doctor's appointment. I don't know if they're doctors, but whatever. You know what I mean when I say doctor's appointment. So I went there, let me grab some soap here. We don't have any apple flavor. What oh, the? No, it's in the blue. It's in the blue bottle. Um, it's gone? Oh, yeah, that's gone. It's still dawn. Rain scent. What the heck is, did we get this for free? Oh, okay. This was probably a free gift if you buy a certain amount of groceries. Rain scent. You know what's already rain scent? This, the stuff that comes out of the faucet. Rain scent, get out of here with this rain scent. Anyway, so I, I went to the sleep clinic and uh, when you first go, they just ask you a few questions. You fill out a survey, well actually I didn't fill out the survey there, but they give you like a couple of things to do. Then they give you this machine. It looks like a CB radio kind of, right? And then it just has a bunch of stuff that connects to you when you sleep. Anyways, they give it to you in a little briefcase. At least that's what they did for me. And in the briefcase, we have uh, what I'm assuming is valuable. And so after there, I was like, okay, I don't want to keep doing, I don't want to keep doing this all the time. When I'm working, when I'm doing this and it falls down, it's so annoying, right? So... I was like, I'm gonna get a trim, cause it was like down to here. I'm gonna get a trim so that it can be styled. I don't like wearing hair things. If I wear anything, it's just a hat. Okay, cool, whatever. I go to this barber shop. It's closed. I wanted to try a classic barber shop. 
Okay, I wanted to try a a like blood stains <laughs> on the pliers barber shop. Okay, one that doubles as a dentist. Okay, some classic somewhere where you have an experience to talk about. Okay, so I'm going to these different places because they're all closed. And they're, they're closed because those types of barbershops are usually only open a few hours a day. Okay, they have the regular clients who come in, you know, some go like once a week so that their hair always looks exactly the same. Some people go once a month, some people go every few months, but you know, they got their client list and that's kind of all. They got the occasional walk-in. I wanted a place where they had a legit twirly barber whatever that thing is called. I don't know what it's called, but you know, that, that thing, the red, white, and blue twirly thing. I wanted one of those, uh, type of barbershops. They're all closed. I'm Googling them at this point and I'm like, okay, I'll go to this one. I go to this one. I go in there. They have, uh, three people in there who are, I'm assuming, barbers or hairdressers or whatever. It was a barbershop, barbershop. I go in there and the guy goes, oh, hello, someone will be with you in a second. I waited there for like five minutes at the counter. Another guy came out and he's like, oh, all right, someone will be with you in a minute. And then he just goes on his phone. And this guy was on the phone already when I came in. So I was like, all right, wait five minutes. And I'm like, all right. Now to this, I'm leaving. So I left, and as soon as I left, they were like, oh, hey, buddy, hey, 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 what's going on? And I just ignored them, I just left, because I'm not gonna, that's just so annoying to me. Don't pretend you're gonna be, just say, hey, sorry, there's a bit of a wait. We are not gonna cut your hair because of whatever. Don't be like, oh, someone will be right with you, and then they're not gonna be with you until you leave. That's freaking frustrating. Anyway, they probably had a reason, but it doesn't matter. I don't have to get my hair cut there, so I didn't. Anyway, I Google another place. And the only other place that I could see on the Google machine was this place by 7-Eleven. Oh no, sorry, I went to another place first. Uh, which was by a Chinese restaurant and jewelry store. Yeah. I went there first. I go in there. And I was nervous about this place. So to get back to the uh, to get back to the uh, sleep study thing, there was this crackhead in the parking lot, and I was like, "Hmm, I don't want to be that guy, but I'm going to be that guy who <laughs> takes all my valuable shit out, my backpack and the briefcase of sleep monitoring stuff." And this guy's gonna see me and be like, oh, that guy doesn't trust me because I'm a crackhead. And if he would have said something, I would have been like, dude, you're a crackhead, do you blame me? But he didn't say nothing to me. He just he just looked at me, bring all my stuff out of my truck. <laughs> so he couldn't steal it. And I don't know if he was gonna steal it, he probably wasn't, but I didn't wanna take the chance. Anyways, I go into that barbershop. It's a one chair barbershop. And I was like, perfect. A little modern for my taste. I don't know why I say that because I've never been to one, but you know, you just have like this, you just have like this image in your head, you know, somewhere where the dude wears an apron for some reason, you know, he might be a mustachioed man. He might be balding himself, but still manages to style the rest of his hair like perfectly, you know, like in an old 50s style or something. He was not that. He was just a regular dude. I don't even remember what he looks like. I go into his barbershop. He says hello, which was nice. And then I was waiting for two people who were ahead of me. And since I had to wait for those two people and it was just one dude, I was like, ah. Ashley called me, actually. This is when you called me, Ashley, when I was going to be home. And so I just left because I didn't want to be on the phone in front of these people in case they thought it was, I don't know, upsetting the ambiance because Ashley one time told me you don't answer the phone when you're in a elevator in an elevator which I always do well, <laughs> well in this case it was a gondola <laughs> oh, 
for some reason, yeah, I was just talking on the phone and Ashley was cringing at me. And I'm like, why are you cringing? Like, people get phone calls. I wasn't talking about anything weird. Because it's like you were the only one talking. Yeah, because the awkward silence because my gramps was making fun of that dude. That's why no one was talking. People were talking before that guy. Yeah. Did I ever tell you guys the story about my grandfather? And and this one. So we were in this gondola. Okay? Going up to the top of this mountain. Now, I've never been in this gondola going up before. Oh no, this was going down. This was going down. Okay, so going up, whatever. Uneventful. Going down. It's kind of a... So random, that guy, what was his problem? Anyway, so going down, there's these benches that you can wait at because it's only like 30 or so people can fit on it at a time or something, right? And it's only just one car. It goes down. What's that mountain called? Whistler? Yeah. Yeah, Mount Whistler or Whistler Mountain, something like that. In B, It's on the BC-Alberta border. No, Is, you're thinking Robson. Whistler is more... Oh, you're right. Yeah. Robson is the is the one on the board. Yeah, okay, sorry. It's still in Jasper there. Yeah, okay. It doesn't really matter. Just some backstory that you may or may not be interested in. Uh, it's easier to see what's on the mind of a guy with a receding hairline. Oh, like me? Like this? I've had that my whole life. I've been receding since I was a young lad. Anyway. Um... This is what makes people think that I'm I'm related to my uh, the people who adopted me because all my older brothers have that too. <laughs> anyway, um, I wasn't really adopted, but that's an easy way to describe it. Anyway, okay, so this mountain story. There's these benches. And there's people waiting on the benches already, but there's still space for us. So it's me, Ashley, Roger, and Angela. Okay? There's enough for them and for us and no one else. And then this older couple, not old necessarily, like 60s? Something like that. These 60-year-old folks come. And th there's a lady and a man, a husband and wife, I'm presuming. And I offer my seat to them. And they say, no, actually, I offer it to her specifically. And then he says, no, she's fine. And I was like, well, that's kind of weird. I'm going to stand up anyway. <laughs> and so I, I'm standing. And then she does take the seat eventually, I think, if I remember correctly. Yeah. She does. yeah. And uh, whatever. So he already seemed kind of like a jerk. But maybe I was just misreading it. Like, no, she's fine. Like, it's not... A, trouble for me to stand up but anyway the gondola comes we all go on and at this point so this gondola goes up to a like a decent sized building on the false peak of this mountain you can probably google it if you want to you can see kind of what it's like and in this in this building there's a restaurant a small restaurant and i guess a little staging area to wait for the gondola. Ah. And maybe a lookout. What happened? The YouTube app is out of date and no updates are available for this device. Please visit YouTube on your browser instead. Oh, that's so annoying. That's why it doesn't work. Yeah. Dude, stop making shit that goes obsolete, tech world. That's so annoying. That's why I couldn't get that yeah. going. Yeah. Anyway, so we get into the thing. The building is quite tall, and some of the siding had ripped off in the high winds. And since it ripped off, it obviously just flew where it flew. And it was down the side of the mountain, kind of on a on a, like a pretty steep cliff, like probably a 75 to 80 degree cliff that was all like rocks. And uh, so, to be fair, it did look bad because it's just this mangled metal, like five or six pieces or maybe up to ten pieces of mangled metal just kind of laying there strewn about. And every time there's wind, it kind of gets further away or whatever. And this dude goes, 
on the way down and I think on the way up, the the operator, they like give you like trivia, not trivia, what do you call it? Yeah, trivia, I guess. Oh yeah, like facts. Facts. They don't ask you questions necessarily, although sometimes they do. But they like say, Oh yeah, so this gondola was built in blah blah blah. It was first because of this, some, some, blah blah blah. We had to this and that and whatever. They tell you a bunch of things. And uh the the guy who said that his wife didn't need a seat was like <laughs> he was like enough of this information. Hey, uh when are you gonna clean up all this debris on the mountain? And then so the guy goes, Oh, well, it's high wind, so it's dangerous, you know, wind catching it. You can imagine a guy going down there, you'd have to repel. You can't walk down there. You can walk down there, but you couldn't walk down there, grab this stuff, and walk back up. It would take a few people just because of it. It's so, like, perilous in a sense. Um, and it's just not the right time to do it because the winds are so high. And so he's basically explained that to this man. And he goes, hmm, bit of an eyesore. Which made everyone kind of cringe at his, like... Dude, obviously they don't want to, like, no one's like, hey, look at the beautiful nature and this metal we've left on the side of the mountain. Like, no one's, no one's expecting to see that, but obviously it's left there for some reason. No one's leaving it there on purpose, right? And I'm sure that was everybody's thought. And then, my grandfather <laughs> was like... <laughs> classic Roger was like he's like he's kind of right beside the guy and he's like he looks down he's like yeah when are they gonna pick up all these rocks and then everyone just burst out laughing and then when it was quiet again he's like it's a bit of an eyesore and then everyone <laughs> burst out laughing again because he was obviously making fun of this dude asking stupid questions and then it was awkward silence because that guy felt obviously awkward. And then I get a phone call. And then Ashley's cringing because I'm talking on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what brought this up? Why? Why? Dude, I was talking. Oh, yeah. So anyways, back to the haircut place. Now I'm more conscious of that just in case people have a problem with me talking on the phone. Especially since I don't put the phone to my ear. I just start talking because it's in my <laughs> headphones. So imagine me going, Hello? <laughs> They'll be like, oh yeah, we'll be right with you. So I just said hello. <laughs> so anyway, so then I I left and then I went to a I Googled again. The last haircut place was the one by 7 Eleven. Okay. Never go to 7 Eleven for a haircut. <laughs> Ever. It doesn't matter if they're the last place. Don't go. So, anyways, I go there. I park, go in, there's two dudes there. One is younger, one is older. One is about 34-ish. One of them is like 50-ish, okay? They say hello, or the one guy says hello, the older guy, okay? No problem, he's cutting someone's hair, snip, snippity, snip. He's done, and then when he's done, after he's finished cutting that guy's hair, I'm assuming, okay, I'm next. He's going to do his thing. He's going to clean off the clippers with that little brush thing. He's going to put the shit in the barbasol. He's going to sweep off the chair. He's going to the apron thing. He's going to sweep up the hair. He's going to do, you know, the regimen of things that you always see people do in haircut places. This is what he did. Pretend this is a phone, okay? Pretend this Brillo pad is a phone, okay? So, this is what he does. How can I do this? Okay, you're me, okay? He goes, okay, good to meet you, blah, blah, blah. Thanks for letting me cut your hair. Let me take your money. Hold on, this is over there. Let me take your money to the guy, right? He's more over here, but I don't have room. Okay, cool, $26. Sweet, thanks, see you again. Goes over here. Grabs his phone. You guys would be a little lower, okay? If you can imagine. 
He was more like this. Okay. And he's over here. And he's just like. <sighs> he's actually a little closer to me. <sighs> Breathing all loud for some reason. Going on his phone. <sighs> for a long ass time. Then he puts down his phone. Or actually, he charges his phone. Puts it on the seat beside me. Then he walks over to his chair. And then he says, what do you want? And I was like, uh, haircut. What do people usually come here for? Like, what are you talking about? So we, uh, I, I, I hop over onto the chair. Nothing is clean. And like, it doesn't really bother me. Ashley brought this up the other day though, except for that, what if the person had, this person before had lice or something. But like, there's hair everywhere, but it's a haircut place. Sometimes there is hair, but he didn't clean nothing off. Okay, those of you who are in the haircutting professions probably would know better than me why you would do that, uh, why you would, why you should do that, what the proper etiquette is, all that stuff. All I know is that usually that's what I see people do: is clean off their shit before they have a new client come on. And uh, th he just didn't, okay? So I'm in the seat now. He puts the apron on me, which is way too small. It's like a kid's one. It just it just covers my s stomach. Doesn't, doesn't cover my lap. <laughs> I didn't do that part. Hey, if you're going that cover to the right, there's that black um, Thing. I should be on the right hand side. No. Nope. Oh, sorry. It's in the drawer. Right back. Yeah, with the clock. Right back. Yeah. Sorry. Hold on a second, guys. Okay, so I'm in this thing, and I, he says, "What do you What do you want?" So I take off my hat, my toque, and I'm like, "Okay." So I'm like. It's a mop. I need you to tighten it up, basically. I'm like, just cut some length off the dead stuff, whatever it's called. Take that. And when you cut it, please put some texture into it so that I can style it in a, in a sense. And he goes, okay. And he's like, so how much? I'm like, well, just whatever it needs. And he's like, a couple inches? I'm like, sure. And he like, Pulls it, he does the thing between the fingers where it's dangly out there, and he's like, about that much? I'm like, sure. So he goes, okay. He goes and grabs his scissors, goes like this, and then just goes in a straight ass line. And I was like, I couldn't really see my head in the mirror because there was stuff in the way. But like, I went over like this, and I'm like, that looks so stupid. And he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, dude, that's like so short and straight. And he's like, he's like, well, you said a couple inches. I'm like, yeah, that's more than a couple inches. And he's like, he's like, no, you said two inches. I was like, yeah, that's like way more than two inches. So he like picks up some hair from the floor and he goes, look, that's two inches. And I look at it, I'm like, dude, that's at least three inches. And he's like, he's like, no. He grabs his clipper. He's like, look, this is number two. He's like, one, two. I'm like, that's a number two, that's two inches. So you cut at least four inches off of my freaking hair. And he's like, he's like, he's like, oh, it's okay. You wanted a couple inches, you don't like it, it's okay, it's fine. Like he's blaming me like I told him the wrong thing. So this is like up to here. Then he goes over to this side and he cuts this down to here, like down, down here like this. So it's uneven as heck. And I was like, I'm like, see, that's more like I thought you were going to do. And he's like, hey, you wanted it and I, I did what you wanted. Anyway, time goes on with the haircut. It just looks like absolute trash. I looked like, what did someone say on Instagram? They, they pulled up a dude. They told me a guy, this comedian guy, 
I forget what his name was, though. Was anyone here from the Instagram live where I told this story? Uh, let's see here. Emo Phillips. Yes. Okay. Look up Emo Phillips. Thank you, pet. Emo Phillips. That's exactly what he did. Minus the bangs. Okay. That's what, that's what I freaking looked like. I looked so stupid. And I was like, okay. So I look at the pictures on the wall and I'm like, give me like something where I can style it like that. And he's like, you said, keep it long. I'm like, bitch, you made it. So it can't stay long. I look like Madeline. I do not want this freaking haircut. Give me something where that. He's like, wow, that's that's very short on the sides. And I'm like, yeah, I notice how it doesn't look dumb. Give me that. So he's like, he's like, then he started asking me like very condescendingly every single thing he did. He's like, are you sure you want this? This is what you want. Is this what you want? Are you sure? I'm like, dude, you already ruined it. I'm like, you could give me a skin tight fade and it would look better. It would look like some freaking Aryan dude. Anyway, <laughs> Archie's getting that fly. Oh, he missed it. Anyway, he, uh, he, does, uh, he does it. It still doesn't look the greatest. So then I show him, I'm like, I'm like, okay. Make it so that, uh, uh, that it, it's like almost buzzed on the sides and then so then he buzzes it and then I'm like, okay, that looks good enough. That's fine. And then uh, and then I paid $26 for the worst haircut I've ever gotten. It looks stupid. It looks fine. It's just it looks different than what I wanted it to. So everyone who made fun of my hair here on YouTube, anyone who said that I looked stupid before, I did not do this because of your comments. It was an accident. I think it, <laughs> it looks fine. It looks like how I used to look, but like, you know how long it took me to grow that? Not very long, but still. Now I have to start all over. This freaking guy. This freaking guy. Anyways, that's my haircut story with extra stories put in for bonus. <laughs> At least you have hair. I guess so, Dale. You don't have hair? The story is just as funny the second time around. <laughs> yeah, I probably forget some of the details and stuff, but... Yeah, that guy. Freaking guy. He cut your hair like Emo Phillips. I wish you had taken a picture of that. Oh, I look so stupid. Oh, yeah. One of the things, though, he kept saying, how about this? And I'm like, bro... I can't even see because your empty Barbasol jar is in the way. And he's like, oh, I can move that. <laughs> I'm like, bro, I'm kind of being like, hey, maybe freaking fill that up. <laughs> he just has combs in an empty. I'm like, why do you even have your combs in there? There's no, there's no point. I don't know how often you're supposed to change that blue Kool-Aid out, but he just decided, you know what, if I never have it full, I never have to change it. I can just put my dusty ass combs in there. Frick. Don't forget to tell us about the sink. Hey, Art. Oh yeah, he had no sink. Usually they have sinks, right? I don't think I've ever been to one where they don't have a sink so they can wash your hair. And I mean, whatever, he didn't have it. But it was so weird, there was dust on his, all his, Everything that was plugged into the wall. I like started looking around. I'm like, dude, this is probably like some sort of health violation. So I forget what the place is called. It's called Barbershop. On Google though, I, I'm kind of lost as to where it is. Which one it is. Because I feel like the pictures on the Google are different than what it looks like in real life. So I was saying earlier it was like Mr. Handsome's Barbershop. But I think that's a different one now. I think, but I'm not sure. But dude, I'm never going there again. Guys who goes with that, I a long time ago when going to get hair done at a salon one with the rest of the nines. You better get a better, better haircut that way. Well, I definitely was not dressed to the nines, but I wasn't dressed as terribly as I normally do. All right, I was going to the doctors and I went to go see, whatever I was dressed like, 
in the Mr. Shock video at the end there, when I gave him back the picture, that's what I looked like. So I didn't necessarily look like amazing, but I wasn't wearing dirty clothes or like stained clothes. <laughs> Josh, you should go back and get a straight razor on a live. Get a straight razor on a live. Yeah, you think so? <laughs> then he'll slit my throat because I'll be making fun of him. Like I was just, he probably was upset that I was roasting his terrible haircut he was giving me. And he probably didn't know, like he could have just told me to leave, which I wish he would have. I should have just gotten up. That's what I should have done. I should have been like, dude, what the heck is this? It's like he was a dog groomer, just the way that he did it. Like, you know how dogs have like their ears cut? Yeah, that's what I look like. Huh? Willy Wonka? Yeah, Willy Wonka. That's exactly what he did. He was like, he's like, oh, you're gonna love this. <laughs> And then, and then in the back, he did do the texture. And I was like, okay, well, look at the sides. And then, just, it looks so stupid. I was like, what do you think this is? I feel like I should be in one of those like futuristic movies from the eighties. You know what they thought 2015 was going to be like in the eighties with all these stupid haircuts. Yeah. God. Dumb. Hello, Susie. Dude, missed your long hair already. Graduated in 74. Most had long, beautiful, styled hair. Very sexy. Still love you. <laughs> Very sexy. Have Dakota cut your hair. You mean Dakota? Uh, he doesn't know how to cut long hair. So no. But um, he would have done probably a better job. But the thing is, it's short now, so it doesn't matter. I'm gonna change the water here. Best to stick to change since they do have health and safety. Yeah, but they, it's just, I wanted a new flavor. I wanted the flavor of the classics. Like I, one time I went to Home Depot, okay? I met this dude there when I was looking at something in the kitchen. Come on. And uh, that dude was a barber. But he worked at Home Depot because he had a kid and he did barbarism. Wait, barbarism? That's barbaric. Uh, he did barbering? Whatever, out of his home, but he didn't make quite enough to support a child, he thought. So he started working at Home Depot. But, I mean, he had like a straight razor tattooed on his thumb and like scissors on his finger, on his middle finger. And I was like, nah, that guy's probably a good barber. <laughs> but maybe not. <laughs> Cutting hair, the barber is called... I can't read that, it's behind the freaking thing. It's called Baba, pretty sure. Is it really? <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> Uh, I have heard, I have a hard time getting a hairdresser to cut my hair the way I would like it. It can relate to your, I can relate to your story somewhat. I wish I could speak up and tell them my opinion of the cuts they give me. You should. What are they going to do? They're going to just say, oh, sorry. They're not going to, like, nothing's going to happen to you. And if something happens to you, well... I, I don't know. Your options are vast, I guess, I think. Hold on, I'm just getting this popcorn out of this. Okay. Uh, classics? Get some hair gel and you can style it into a pompadour. 
Yeah, that's not what I'm saying. I said I wanted the classic barber experience. I didn't want a classic haircut. But maybe that was my problem. Barberism is when they use an axe to cut your hair off at the neck. <laughs> uh, good one, Jim. Uh, saws and shaves at Home Depot. Right, exactly. Um, hello, Barbara. Now, Barbara is probably a better barber with just having a similar name than this clown. I once went for a trim, like you asked, for a really short amount off. They cut off tons, but classic Brit. I paid with a smile and went home and cried. Well, I didn't cry. It didn't bother me so much that it like made me emotional. I was just like, what the hell, dude? Oh, okay, it's okay, it's fine. That's what you wanted, but you don't want it no more, it's fine. Two, that's not what I wanted. Two inches is two inches. And four inches is four inches, that's double. I had a friend recommend a place to get a cut in color. Worst experience yet. I wanted blonde streaks. She fried my hair and butchered the cut. Oh. Say again? Does it bother me if what? A curiosity is sold in all your hard work or something like that. Uh okay, so So the question was, does it bother me that curiosity is gone and with it my hard work? Something like, something like that. that? Well, it all wasn't work. my store and Alex can do what he wants. Now, when he told me he was selling it, I did tell him, what? No, dude, why? And then he told me his reasons, which are good reasons. They're the same reasons he would have told you guys if you watch this channel. You know, it's just. That was his dream, and now he has new dreams. He, hey, stop. Why are they being so crazy? <laughs> They're gonna wreck that fern. Uh, the reasons were uh, valid reasons, but me and my selfishness, though innocent selfishness, like I didn't expect him to do anything he didn't want to do, and he knows that. Uh, I just wanted him to keep it, not because of the work that I did on it, but because it is, it was the best antique store I have ever been in. The vibe was so cool. It looked like an antique store that someone would, uh, it looked and felt like an antique store that someone who was making one for a movie set would do. And since he has experience in that, maybe that's what exactly what he, shit, I never even thought of that. That's probably why it was so cool. Things are way better in movies and TV and stuff for like vibe than they usually are in real life. So you go into a candy store in a movie, it's insane. You go into one in real life, it's not ever insane. I'm sure there is one that is insane. I'm sure there's one where there's a slide that uh, goes through the whole thing and you can... I don't know. I'm just making shit up. I've never seen that in the movie either, but... There's probably one with a ball pit of jawbreakers. Actually, that would hurt. <laughs> right? His store was so cool. I really liked it. And I really liked working on it. Uh, I liked what we did. Um, if I'm honest, I feel like it's a shame he doesn't have it anymore. But he could always do it again. And he may or may not ask me to work on the new one. Uh but if he does, I would be more than happy to do it, even if I knew that this could happen again. Alex is, you guys, as viewers, like I see a lot of negativity on his channel, so I'm not necessarily speaking to them, but just people who are regular viewers, uh, who who like him and, and uh, uh, like appreciate him, you do not even see the half of the 
like the goodness that he does for people. Like he doesn't show most of it and people, and the stuff he does show is, is, is decent amount, but he, he's like a, he's like a, yeah, humble guy. And he does it like, he doesn't do things for views. A lot of people accuse him of that. Uh, He does do things for views, but like when it came to like the refugee things and all that stuff, he did a lot more than you guys ever saw way more than you saw and everything. So anyone who would have said, you could have also done this, which that's none of your business. You could have done all that as well. Uh, you, you don't know the half of what he's done. And so even if I was upset for real, like he was like, he d- didn't do things the way I wanted him to do it. It's like, not even like it, it still wouldn't bother me because he's just, he's so good. He's such a good dude. Um, now that's probably not exactly the answer you're looking for. I'm not saying that you're accusing him of anything or or have a, a lack of trust for him or anything. And maybe you do, maybe you don't. But for me, I like working for the guy. He's paid me for everything that I've done. Most of the time, even when I've insisted him not pay, he is still paid. He's just he's just a good dude. Melissa's here. She commented. Melissa's here? Yeah, she made a comment. Oh, Jesus. You would be the first one we'd call. You have amazing creativity and we love having you part of our team. Now I feel awkward. (laughs) Well, thank you, Melissa. I'm glad that you would call. Um, Yeah. I forget what was the last thing I was going to say. Oh, I will say this, and this is my opinion alone. The restaurant that that is in there now is the worst restaurant I've ever been to in my life. The uh, ambiance sucks, but so do many restaurants, and I didn't care. The food is trash. It is a waste of food. It is the worst food I've ever had at a restaurant ever, and that's being nice. Like they just, they, whatever they made, like I put them in a vlog. And the reason why I didn't say anything about them is because it was so awful. I didn't finish it. Just, they gave me like this. I, but to be fair, I had no idea what to expect. I was like, this is Colombian food. All right. I guess I don't like Colombian food, but it could be that dish in particular wasn't good. It was literally hot dogs cut up on fries with cold cheese and bell peppers. Terrible. And it was like 18 bucks. Maybe it was 13 bucks. It was too much. I I did not enjoy it at all. The ice cream place on the other hand is freaking great. I've only been there twice. Uh, It's called Twice Cream. I've been there twice. I've been there once with Landon, and then I went there again with Jakota, maybe? I don't remember who I went there with the second time. I probably wasn't Jakota, because Jakota doesn't eat sweets that often. Uh, I can't remember who was this, when it was the second time I went. But I got the banana bread flavor the first time. I can't remember what I got the second time. That place is great. The ambiance is fine. It's just, I don't know, it's very, uh, clean is the wrong word. It is clean, but it's like, it's very sterile feeling. I wish it had a better vibe to it, but it's fine. And the ice cream is great. Landon, I think, I went there twice though. Colombian poutine, maybe. I don't know, it was not good. Alex thinks of Josh when some of the items he is cleaning out of the house, Josh may be able to use. He does, absolutely. I'm really good at showing up and making things awkward. <laughs> That's funny. Love the haircut. Josh sending best wishes to you and Ashley from Cambridgeshire, UK. Hello. You get what you pay for. Find a professional barber. Make an appointment. It will be clean. A barber pole is only a decoration. 
What do you think I paid for? <laughs> what the frick are you talking about? I paid for a haircut. Do you think I'm like attacking you on a personal level? Wait, was that your husband? Your husband sucks at cutting hair, I'm telling you. Or was that your brother? <clears throat> Find a professional barber, she says. I mean, I just assumed he was a professional because it was at a barber shop. I don't know. I don't know. I guess I could ask for credentials next time. I feel like that's a bit absurd, though. Just being like, um, can you prove that you're a professional barber, please? Beyond having a barber's chair, all the haircut plays. I guess I should have been like, this place is too dirty. But I thought maybe it was just like, I don't know, maybe I don't know what's up. Maybe this is like a courtesy that places, ha I don't I don't know. But 26 bucks, usually a men's haircut is like $20. But I overpaid. You get what you pay for. I shouldn't have paid for it, and I would have still gotten it though. Archie. Uh, Tia Green says hi, Josh. Tia Green, the legend. Did I? Okay, guys, I've been doing these Instagram lives, right? Uh, leading up to my art show, which is on April nineteenth. You should come. Uh, except for uh, it's only one day, so you gotta. It might be a little hard for some people to come, especially if you live far away. But today they called me and said, hey, uh, just making sure that we're locked in for April 19th. Um, someone just called us and said they are booking their flight from Southern California. And I was like, what? So that's awesome, whoever you are. Um, but anyway, uh, Wait, what was I just talking about? Jesus, my freaking mind. Oh yeah, Tia Green. So in these live videos, I've been interacting just like this whilst I paint. Uh, sometimes we're taking breaks or whatever and we have longer conversations. I opened up this one live video uh, telling the story of... So if you watched my last vlog at the very end there, I have a If You Know You Know and a thanks to Tia Green at the end. Because for that vlog, I was looking for music, specific music for the opening scene of the fish underneath the light. That's only gonna make sense really if you watched it. But whilst I was searching for that music, I found a specific song by someone. At, huh? Sorry. Uh, the specific song by someone. I can't remember who it is or what the song is called. But it reminded me, about two seconds of it, reminded me of another, reminded me of another song. And so I was like, guys, this two seconds of this clip reminds me of a song. What is it? And of course, that's a ridiculous request. Hey, figure out the song for me that I can't tell you what the lyrics are, what the genre is, who sings it, if it's a man or woman. You know, I just, I had no idea. I'm like, and it's literally just these, literally two words of an entirely different song that was slowed down. It's like a cover of a song reminds me of a different song. And Tia Green goes, try Seasons in the Sun. And I was like, holy crap, I think that's it. Turned it on and that's exactly it. So that's why at the end of the last vlog, we have... Whatever that music is, at the very end, just watch. It's it's that music of the cover of the whatever song plays with the fish under the light at the very end. And then it goes into the uh, Seasons in the Sun by what's his name at the very end. I can't remember exactly how I did it, but that's why I put that in there. Just as an Easter egg for those of you who are live during that Instagram live. So Tia Green, thank you very much. See you later, Melissa. Uh, hello, Maureen. Um, Josh, you remind me of some film star. Now, who is it? It is. I don't know. Some people sometimes say that I look like uh, some guy, but I forget what his name is. 
Um, no cheese curds, and in the and in the big curds before the cheese gets pressed. Wait, hold on. What what are you talking about? No cheese curds, and in the big curds before the cheese gets pressed into the block. Hold on. Spelled poutine. Cheese curds as in cottage cheese. Oh, gross. No. Uh, well, cottage cheese is okay, I guess. I don't really like it, though. French fries covered with cheese curds and gravy. The best comes with a side order of defibrillator. <laughs> That's funny. And then someone said cheese curds as in cottage cheese. Right. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, my God. This is how you looked when I first saw you and your brother working with Alex. Much younger. Yeah, people say that. I think I look older anyway. Alexander is a cool guy and his family is too. He is. He is. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let me go back to this. God damn it, this freaking mouse. I don't know why it's doing that. There we go. I'm using my laptop here, so that's what you see me looking at when I'm looking at the comments. Thank you to Amy for sending me this laptop. What a legend as well. Um, yeah, poutine is uh, fries, like chips, if you will, uh, with um, gravy. This is how I like it. There's also such thing as donair poutine. It's not as good, in my opinion, but you got... Fries, a little bit of cheese, a little bit of gravy, fries, a little bit of cheese, a little bit of gravy, fries, a little bit of cheese, a little bit of gravy, and then you got that nice layering is great. And then you put a bunch of gravy on top and it goes in between there and then some more cheese on top. That's how I like it. And I prefer it with shredded cheese rather than cheese curds because the cheese curds don't really melt that well if the gravy isn't piping hot. And most places won't have piping hot gravy for liability reasons. So I prefer sprinkled cheese. It's just, to me, it's better. The, the type of cheese they use is just, I don't know, cheese curds are not, they don't taste good to me to eat by themselves, whereas the shredded cheese does. Uh, you're welcome, Josh. Thank you for being greatness, says Amy. Being greatness, well... All right, <laughs> you're welcome, I guess. Um, Terry Jacks, yeah, he's the guy who sings the the Seasons in the Sun. Carriage of No Return says, have enjoyed being here, but off to bed now, ready for an early start tomorrow. Keep kicking ass with both feet. Well, thank you very much. I'm just about done here, which is good timing because at three o'clock, I always do a... Uh, Hmm. I need a brush, I think. I'm going to drain this water one more time. At 3 o'clock, I always do uh, what we call after church on the uh, Patreon feed. We do it live. We usually hang out for a boat. Well, it's always different. Last, last week, we talked about... What was it? What was last week's thing? I thought it was the best one. It was so fun. We were talking about, shit, does anyone remember? Russians love Vladimir Putin. <laughs> oh, that's good. Glenn with the punny jokes all the time. Uh, all right, the plane crash. We talked about a plane crash. Uh, wait, was it a plane crash? Maybe they were, I can't remember. I don't like the squeak feeling on your teeth when you bite into cheese curds. Plus, they are kind of blanted. Pet, I don't mind the texture myself, but they are very bland. The shipwreck. Yes, it was a shipwreck, wasn't it? Oh yeah, the shipwreck in the uh, in the Arctic, in the, you know, in the South Pole, in Antarctica. Yes, 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 that's what we talked about, where they survived like two years out in the Antarctic wilderness if you will not wilderness but 
I guess you'd call it wilderness. When I think wilderness, I always think of like trees. Yeah, we talked about that. Yeah, that was such a fascinating story. Anyway, this this week I didn't pick anything yet. Does anyone have any suggestions of an, an amazing story or just an interesting story that I can bring up to talk and learn about on the after church? Does anyone here have any ideas? We did talk about a plane crash another time though, I know. Um, I need a brush to get, I need something with bristles to get into the corners of this Keurig thing. There's the one that's for like a straw that's in the cutlery jar. Yeah, this will probably work. Evil Easter bunnies, lol. Is that a thing? Like, I need something that you actually know of, something that's real that I can actually look up. Do you? Did you have daylight savings time in Canada today? I don't know. Do we? Yeah, we did. So it's two fifty-eight right now, right? No. Oh, that microphone's on. I haven't changed it yet. Oh yeah, this is 157. This is 258. Yeah, so the laptop's right and the stove is right. Wait, so I actually didn't sleep that long? When did I go to sleep? 10. 10? I slept freaking good. Elephant Whisperer, okay. I'll look that up. <laughs> Jim says most of Canada did. We in Saskatchewan don't because we know it's too And we almost got rid of it. But then they voted, nah, let's keep doing this Maybe useless. The vote, was so confusing. the vote was confusing. It was like, if you don't not want to have something that's very inconvenient, but at the same time convenient for some, and always but, but never have to worry about sometimes not, but usually always, but also not ever, turning your clocks forward, back, or keeping the same, vote no. <laughs> and then you're like, what? So do we want yes or do we want no? It was so confusing. Just the worst language. It should have been like daylight savings, yes. Daylight savings, no. No. And then it would have been like, we would have won, if you want to call it a win. Yeah. It was so goddamn confusing. It's just like... Obviously, the way I said it, did whatever. But it seemed like there was like three double negatives in there. Yeah. Just like, what? What? It was very frustrating. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look at that. Would you just look at it? There are three places in Saskatchewan that do change with daylight savings time. One next to Alberta border, two next to Man Oh, probably like Lloyd. I think the Yukon no longer changes either. Three men sentenced for $18 million Quebec maple syrup heist. Glenn, that was the very first after church we did. The very first one. That's when I was like, cause like on Patreon, I don't do a lot because I never have the time and stuff. So I was like, what is something that I can do every week so that it makes sense? And by the way, I don't know if you're watching, Bishy McCormick and, and Bootjack Clayshack, you both have things that, you, you, that I gotta send you, but you have to claim it first because you might not like the things. One is the Valentine's card painting, Morbid Heart, and one is the uh, fingerprint. So if you're watching this, send me your deets if you want those things. If you don't want them, they're just going to get put into... What the frick? Look, I broke this. It always comes out. No. Does it? Yeah. Oh. Yeah? I think. Oh. I'm Maybe I'm just an idiot. The, all the water drains. It doesn't sound like it's draining now. Okay. Maybe I'm just an idiot. I'm pixelating. I'm pixelating? Well, we're almost done anyway. 
Um, someone says, if we come to Edmonton, where is a good place to stay? So if you're going to come to Edmonton for my show, I'll tell you. Any other time, I don't care. It's coming. The greatest hotel you will ever stay at. Just because it's weird and interesting. It's not the greatest. I'm just kidding. But there's several places you could go. Now, if you never want to leave, except for to come to my show because it's not there, but you can still go to the galleries that are there. Go to the Fantasyland Hotel. Get a theme room, not a regular room. They're kind of expensive though. They're like 300 and some dollars a night. You don't like that place? I was going to say something that's closer to the location. But if you want to go close, okay, if you want to go close to where my show is going to be, which is on the north end of town, it's like north east ish, not really that east though anymore anyway. North, we looked at some places on, I think it was on Patreon. Because some of those folks were asking. There is... Wow, that's North End. There's like lots of homeless people there. That take up those hotel parking lots. I don't know if that matters to you. But if it doesn't matter to you. If you don't mind your car possibly getting broken into. There's plenty that you could go there. Uh... North is kind of hard because I never go there really. If you, okay, yeah, just Google um, Londonderry Mall. It's on One Thirty Third Street Ave, I mean, or One Thirty Fourth Ave, One Thirty Fifth, One Thirty Seventh. I don't know. It's somewhere in there. I think it's One Thirty Fifth Ave and One. I don't know what street it's on. It's like, oh, it's not even in the ones anymore. It's probably like 85th street, somewhere in there. There's going to be hotels. You could go to one of those historic ones because that's that used to be, what was that town used to be called? I forget. You can go to one of those cool hotels, motels, hotels. There's hotels and motels. I don't know. It just depends. I would not stay there if I was you. Uh, I would stay... I mean, there's there's problems with crime everywhere, but it's not that bad, in my opinion, in the Maybe West End. Hotels near London Bear Mall have come up. Yeah, just Google. I don't know. There's a Holiday Inn. A Holiday Inn. There's a Holiday Inn Express. Uh, there's also a Holiday Inn Express. Um... But if you stay at the one in West Simpson Mall, then you never have to go anywhere. All the, your attractions are there, all your meals are there, all your uh, gallery experiences are there. But then you'd have to take an Uber or a cab about half hour away. But it's not that big a deal. I mean, if you're from a city, then that's like normal for you probably to go half hour to go somewhere else. Okay, I can't really get inside this thing. Wait, maybe if I do this, if I blast it. I mean, it's like a water. Then your coffee's gonna taste like that. Okay. I'm gonna do like a <laughs> Glenn says, I hate luxury hotels. The towels, the towels are so thick and fluffy I can't even close my suitcase. <laughs> Stay in San Albert, go to confections, 15 minutes to London. Oh, yes! Stay in St. Albert. No homeless people. I don't have a problem with homeless people, just for the record. It's just the crime that often comes with it is what I'm talking about before I get canceled. Um, yes, stay in St. Albert. That's a great idea. You can, and they have, they have like uh, some cool areas there too. That makes way more sense. And if you want to go to West End Mall, it's really easy to, to get to West End Mall from there. If, if that's one of your things. Lots of people like, of course, visiting West End Mall uh, because of all the attractions. More so for the attractions they used to have. They don't really have them anymore. But uh, yeah, St. Albert, that's a great idea. Of course, uh, Tracy is, is from St. Albert, so she knows all about that. Okay, I got three more things here. I'm running. I'm running behind. Uh, 
Oh, I thought my battery was on. I like St. Elmer's with Y. Oh yeah, from the Netherlands. Pop our idea for after church. Look up Eula Tufana. Can you uh, write that down for me, Ashley? If you can see it. Is it a highway trip from St. Albert to Edmonton or do residences connect the two? They are basically connected, but they are not connected by residences. It is a highway per se. St. Albert Trail, it's called, or Mark Messier Way, or Grote Road, or one. Eighteen, maybe. I can't remember what the, it changes names as you go along it, and then it goes all the way to. Well, then it kind of turn, then it disappears. I guess once you get over the river a ways. But yeah, no, it's easy driving. Like you can drive and not get lost from there to West Edmonton Mall. You just have to turn twice. I would say once you're on St. Albert Trail. And you go, you go all the way to want whatever, wherever the Misericordia Hospital is. That's the road that I would turn on. I don't remember what street that is. I just know where places are. I don't know streets. But most of the streets are numbered rather than named, so it's much easier to. Uh... I gotta change this again. For the record, we have homeless folks in St. Albert, but the numbers are so small you can literally count them. Right. I hardly ever see them. And by the way, I've already said this, but I know there's different reasons for people being homeless. In fact, we actually have a friend, an old school friend who is homeless right now. Kind of his own fault, but no, I get that. I know some people are gonna be offended by my candid uh, opinion of them, but I don't have a problem with individual people. <clears throat> Michelle, hello. Plus, I'll be homeless soon. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, Edmonton streets are fairly easy north, south, east, west, except around the river, as I remember anyway. Yeah, some of the newer neighborhoods are more confusing to navigate because they are not on a grid. They're actually very frustrating. I actually hate them. I hate them. Hate them. St. Albert is harder to navigate because none of the streets are numbered, I don't think. They're always like, oh, go on to Perron Street and then head over to Broder or whatever it's called. And then on to McKenna. Like, what? And then go over to Campbell. Like, where is that? In relation, like from like 19 to 119, oh, that's a hundred streets away, easy. From Alexander Street to Zachary Street, it's not 25 away, 26 away, however you wanna look at that. It's, who knows? Could be the next street, could be 30 streets, could be a hundred streets, they might not even be uh, one of them might be an avenue and one is a street. You know what I mean? There's a homeless man in my city who does have a lot of money, but he has mental health problems. His family tried to get him a home, but he chooses to stay on the street. Known to a lot of logo. Well, that's kind of interesting. Have you ever been to Gracie James Bar? So wise to Tracy B. Driving in Edmonton is okay, so long as you stay out of middle way. There are people that have been trying to escape the gravitational well at the center of Millwoods for decades. That's fine. Millwoods is very, very dense population. 
I did some work in Mill Woods. Actually, I did several renovations in Mill Woods. One lady took two years to pay me, but besides that, it's been great. I remember one time my worker who was with me, these people were Sikh. And so he... <laughs> So he goes up to the old man, uh, I imagine the father, who was sitting out on the deck. And he goes, hey, are you Sikh? And the guy didn't speak English, but he probably understood that. <laughs> and he goes, yeah. And then my worker says something. He's like, he's like, hey, you know, blah, 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 blah. He says something in another language, presumably. And the guy goes... No, I don't know. And he's like, nah, he's not Sikh. <laughs> and I was like, what? What did you say? He's like, oh, it means praise to Allah. And I was like, wait a minute. Sikh. What language do they speak? I don't know. Do they speak? Isn't Allah like Muslim or like Arabic? Or I guess those are, those are different, but like. You know, they go hand in hand in a sense. And I was like, I'm pretty sure you're probably speaking the wrong language. And I know for sure you're not Sikh. So, and he looked Sikh to me. He had like the turban and like the white kind of like dress looking clothes. And I was like, I'm pretty sure he knows if he's Sikh. I'm pretty sure you don't know what you're even saying. It was hilarious. And I still bug him to this day about it. Only name streets in St. Albert. I've grown up here and I still don't know how to find places by street name. Yeah, that's got to be so frustrating. <clears throat> I'm not offended. It's not an unreasonable description of St. Albert. It's generally a well-off area, but there are still low economic areas. Sure. We had a female with loads of money. Never begged nor bothered anyone. And she died on, in the streets one night. It was very good. Oh, dang. Yeah, that shit is so sad when people, like there's, um, um, like tons of people who are like almost, like how I made the joke, pretty soon I'll be homeless because the cost of living is so high these days. Like it's insane how much like groceries are. Like my mom coming back from the US, she was only there for like a little over a year. And when she came back, she was like, what? Like three hundred dollars for groceries. Sorry. And like, yeah, it's insane. And I was like, well, because it's Canadian dollars versus American dollars. And she's like, no, I I bought my groceries in the U.S. for like say a hundred dollars, which even with the with the conversion rate or whatever the exchange rate, it's vastly different. Oh, gross! I didn't see that. Have to get this little bit out of here. Okay, that's it. That's it. That's it for dishes, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Hopefully, I answered enough questions to satisfy. Someone had said, um, "Is your headache worse or better than it was last year?" It was Alex D. It's better, but it's not gone. It usually depends. Like I've like tricked, not tricked. I've trained. No, not trained. Conditioned. I've con maybe conditioned myself to be able to do well it's kind of like it's like before i could lift no putting on my shoes would explode my head just that little bit of right i was dead now i can put on my shoes no problem i can even struggle to put on my shoes and it's no problem most of the time sometimes there will be like a twinge but like i've been able to like read the, uh, I don't know if you'd call it an illness, but I've been able to read the condition, let's call it, that I have. And so, like even, like I was saying, like during the Instagram lives, I will take breaks. Usually I will just say, okay, let's take a little break. And rather than always bring up that I got this annoying headache, cause that's gotta be frustrating to people to be like, oh, this guy is always peddling his illness or whatever you wanna call it. That's not what I'm trying to do. I just go, okay, we're gonna take a break. Because even like standing and painting, doing a lot of talking, right now I feel fine. 
but I know, I know if I did this for another 20 minutes, I'd probably be like, okay, I have to take a break. So it's kind of like, I can feel it like it's going to get worse. And I don't really know what to compare it to that, that everyone might understand, but I've learned how to make it so that I make it through the day. And usually I do now, right? I would say most days I, I'm, I call it fine. Like it still hurts, but it hurts like your guys' headaches that you might have. So if your headache is like, oh, I got this annoying headache and it won't go away. Let me try a Tylenol or whatever. That's what it feels like most of the time. But like it's aggravating because it's all of the time. And then sometimes it'll just get worse. Like it'll just be like, okay, now it feels like what I imagine a migraine is like. And then sometimes it's like, it's like excruciating where you're just like, this is too much pain. We should, we should, <laughs> we should take drastic measures, but of course I'm not going to, but you know, where's that brush? Where did I put that? These pants kind of suck. No? I love how non-stick they are. They're very slippery. Though. Yeah, but this is, this is kind of a flawed design in here, no? Are they always like that? They're always like that. Yeah? Yeah. Just don't scratch the... Too late. Finish too much. Scratch it. Did you? I didn't know that was going to happen. We need a better brush. Oh no! <laughs> it's just on the little rivet. You're not even going to notice. <laughs> what? It's just a pan. But they're so pretty and they're new. <laughs> Oh, actually, I'm washing it off. Oh, good. Okay. We need to get like a like a brush but that's like a regular brush, because yeah. that thing is too close to the braided metal. Um. Yeah. Anyways, I don't know what the question was exactly, but hopefully that answers it. Okay. I hope. This is what I hope. I hope that on the April 19th that I feel fine the whole day. Because the night before, the day before, I'm gonna be setting up all day and then I'm gonna be setting up all day that day as well. So, I don't know, I really hope that I'm fine. Oh no, that's not bad. Nah, it's fine. I thought it was gonna be like all of the finish was gonna be gone. Ah, oh, no, I'm not even close. I think most people, oh who have daily pain, learn to live with it. We don't ever bring it up because it's become our daily routine. Yeah, that's true too. I think I, I mostly just bring it up now as a as it's relevant. And some people obviously want to know, but I think it's just like more so I would be like, oh, here's the update, if there is an update. I do have a, a, a lazy diagnosis though, which I don't think I talked about. Um, uh, to be candid here, I am very frustrated with my neurologist. He has said that I have what he believes to be a new, new, daily. new daily persistent headache, which is, which means like the headache is new. I didn't have it before. And usually the symptoms of this condition are, again, that it's new, that it's brought on suddenly, during a specific, uh, Gina! What is he? Oh, I see. He's barking at those kids over there. Anyway, that it, it okay, so it's a new daily persistent headache. So it's every day, never goes away. Uh, usually lasts, uh, nine months or more. So I guess it takes nine months for people to say, hey, this is what it is. And it's uh, untreatable with migraine medications and therapies, as well as uh, that it's um, brought on by one particular event. In my case, lifting that compost bin. And it manifests as a headache that, uh, that migrates like mine does or that it, it often migrates, not that it always does. And also there were some other things that were with it. You could probably Google it and find it. And I was like, bro, you might be satisfied with that, but it started so it can stop. 
Another thing is a different doctor said it is also possible that it is a um, where you have an injury in your spine or brain somewhere that has healed, but your pain receptors are still telling you that something's wrong. So like one of the, one of the, uh, theories remember, uh, early on was that I had a hole somewhere in my spinal cord or in, yeah, somewhere there was a brain bleed or, or a spinal cord leak somewhere, something like that. Obviously lots of my imaging didn't take place till months later. And since it didn't take place so much later, it was harder to see things. So other imaging was, was ordered and that took much longer to get those imaging. And probably by the time we got the best imaging, it, the, whatever was open is now closed. And for whatever reason, I'm still feeling the pain, like a phantom pain, phantom injury pain, if you will, something like that. So I don't know. The thing is, is that it just doesn't go away. Um, I recently stopped taking my heroin, so I don't have, <laughs> no, my meth, I mean. What is it called? Endomethacin? Oh, and propanerol. So I stopped taking the endomethacin and the propanerol. And the elevil. And the elevil. Okay. So now I don't take anything except for supplements like vitamins and things like that. I remember some lady told me that I should take a hundred thousand IUs of zinc. Just put an extra zero. No, I asked her if she put an extra zero and she said no. But that seems like an exorbitant amount. I haven't tried that. I do take, was it zinc or something else? Yeah. But I take like 10,000 IUs, right? Oh, so, vitamin D. Oh, vitamin, oh yeah, that's what it was, vitamin D. So I take 10,000 IUs. I don't even know what an IU is, something unit. International unit. International unit. So I'll take that and then I, I don't know, I take, I just take whatever vitamins Ashley gives me. Oh, uh, absolutely. And uh, that's it. And so how many days has it been? Four, five? Oh, so Seven days already? Yeah, seven days Okay, seven days plus I worked like five hours yesterday, at least. Long time. Well, I was gone for, I did take breaks. But let's say I, I spent five hours of it working. Okay. Granted, I had help. I wasn't doing any heavy lifting hardly at all. And I don't feel worse today when I normally would have, let's say, seven months ago, eight months ago. So either time is healing or I don't know, or I'm just being able to manage it better with my, with my choice to take breaks. Like I just, I'm just learning how to cope with it the best way that I can. And so, uh, t taking the drugs away, the drugs make me fat and, uh, feel not good in other ways. I thought they were helping with uh, the pain in my head, because when I wouldn't take them, like what if I would forget at times, I would, uh, I would then feel not good. But I think it was just, just because. The reason why I didn't take them is because I didn't have time because I was doing something I, and I forgot about them or whatever. So I feel like it's possible that I just, uh, I would have felt bad regardless if I took it or not. So I'm just kind of doing an experiment here. Um, so I stopped taking those and I don't feel any worse when I should feel worse. Now the thing that kind of sucks is that this one drug is also a heart medication. And so keeping my blood pressure low, higher blood pressure means more pressure obviously, and then more pressure in your head, which can give you headaches and stuff. So that's why I'm on the blood pressure thing. Now I do have this mild heart condition. I call it mild because it's not life threatening. It is not good, of course, to have, but um, it's helping my blood pressure. I remember the first day I didn't take it, my blood pressure was kind of high. But then the day before I didn't take it, it was mad low because it lowers your blood pressure. Yeah, and yeah. Well, how low was it? Like 98 over something, 98 over 60 or something. 
90 over 60 90 or something? 90 over 50 something. I don't know. 50 something? Okay, well, whatever it was, it was low. So, you know, it's just, you can't take too much of it because, of course, that's dangerous. You can't take too much of it. Well, they had upped your dose, and I think maybe that. They did up the dose because the pain wasn't going away. Yeah, and then I think it made your blood pressure go up. But now I don't take it at all. And my blood pressure, I haven't really been checking it, so I don't know how good or bad it is. But I feel fine. My energy is, I don't know if it's better, but I feel fine. I just have a headache, that's all. I just have a headache. And last night it was pretty not good, but like not, not excruciating. Was there a hockey game yesterday? Morning. Oh, that was this morning, right. So, you're right, we killed them 4-0. Oilers against the Pens. Uh, yeah, kind of, yeah, it's kind of all over the place. So, I really don't know what to say. I will probably never figure it out, and I will probably never get better. But I hope that I will, and I'm not going to give up. You are like, improving. I seem to be improving, at least outwardly. But, like, it's just, I don't know. Quality of life is a lot lower, <laughs> that's for sure. But, I mean, I always think about how much worse it could be. I think about how when I rated my pain every day for when I went to the hospital and such, it'd be like, okay, I don't want to exaggerate. I don't want people to not believe me. I'm not going to say 10. I'm going to say that the worst that I felt is a 10, but I could certainly feel worse than this. That's how I would describe it usually. And I'd be like, today I feel, I would say four, I would say, for example. A four today is much lower than the four last year. If I felt a four today that I felt then, suddenly, oh, frick, that would suck. It's just, I just remember how, like, just being, like, so not into living, which is a sad thing to say, but I was just, like... I don't want to do this anymore. And now, like, a four is like, well, this is not good, but I don't want to die. <laughs> but, like, I didn't want to die then either. I just didn't want to feel pain. You know, it's it's very, it's a tough thing. And if that's sensitive to you, I'm sorry for bringing that up, but that's just the way that I felt. And now this is the end of the life. <laughs> Well, let's let's fit, let's do something good here at the end here. Uh, that's a good description of your injury, phantom pain, etc. Yeah, uh, a hundred thousand IU's of zinc would give you zinc poison. It must have not been zinc. It must have been something else. <laughs> Might as well go weld some galvanized steel, right? And just breathe in those fumes, <laughs> dude. Galvanized steel is terrible to weld. It stinks so badly, and yes, you can, like, taste metallic. It is not good. I've been on a 12-year learning journey with fibromyalgia. Okay, see? That, that is something that I am so glad I don't have, and I'm sorry that you do have that. That is one of the things that someone assumed that I might have, so I did ask about that. I don't have that. <clears throat> I've asked so many things, so many suggestions. Uh, apparently taking vitamin K with vitamin D3 aids the vitamin D to go deeper into the bones. Right. Do you guys remember that lady who accidentally killed herself by dr drinking only carrot juice? And so her vitamin K intake was way too high and she, <laughs> she turned orange. But then besides turning orange, like vitamin K2, I think it is, thickens your blood. And if it gets too thick and can't flow, you cease to be. So don't go on a carrot juice only diet. Actually, you know what? Maybe that's what will be the after church. Because I only know that story because I've heard it somewhere. I probably read about it somewhere, but we'll go with that. And then whatever Ashley wrote down, we'll do that. So if you're part of my Patreon, thank you very much. If you would like to join the Patreon, it's only $3.00. Per month. You can of course be in a higher tier. Right now I'm making a bear rug out of wood. It's pretty freaking cool. You have to be in tier 3 to get that. One person gets it but you have a chance to get it. And then there's like the insane tier like tier 5. It's a thousand dollars. No one's ever going to do that. That's kind of a joke that me and Matthew Fox came up with. <laughs> and there's tier 4 which is a hundred dollars and you get 
you get a spending allowance, I guess you could call it. I don't know. You get, you get, uh, leave that cat. You get 10% off. Tier two and above gets 10% off anything you buy. Tier two is $10. It's in American though, so I don't know what it is Canadian. Henry's trying to get a ball that doesn't exist. I'm up for a, a what is that? I'm up for a what? Some New York strip diet. I'm up for an only New York strip diet. Like just steaks. Anyways, 70,000 Canadian. Oh, <laughs> that would be so nice. <laughs> $10 American, 70,000 Canadian. Uh, uh, what? Or Josh, maybe look at the story of the white guy who injected into his body to experience having black skin. He wrote a book called Black Like Me. What in the delusion? Why would someone do that? Dude, did he take on the plight of the black man too? Be like, oh, they're oppressing us. The violence against us from the cops. He's like, I know what you feel. Dude, that would piss me off so much if he did that. That is insane. That is insane. Uh, Frosted Sleet says, I've got, I've had chronic back pain at an, at an eight since 2020 from a bad surgery. Basically worked from my bed. Glad I have FaceTime to see grandkids unless they travel. Wow. See, that sucks too. I don't mean to sound like I know what you could do, but I've heard great things about like stem cells and stuff. Maybe you could somehow try to look into that. Maybe, I don't know if that would help at all, but Frick, at an eight since 2020, four years. For a second, I thought it was still 2022. I almost said two years. <laughs> uh, what tier do we need to be in to get a 138 sticker? You know what? I'm going to give a 138 sticker to everyone uh, for Christmas. Usually I just give a card. Although if you don't give me your address, you don't get a card. And so many people decided not to give their address this year. I don't know why, but I still bought all the cards. So now I just have extras. Um, there's a story about MGK's tattoos being extreme black right now. Wild. Oh yeah, they look so um, I don't like blackout tattoos, but that's just my opinion. I liked his tattoos before. I don't really like him, but anyways, guys, we're we're off. Thank you for hanging out here. Sorry to end on a bit of a bummer, but here we are, and there you are. I'm gonna go live now on Patreon, half hour late, but thanks for being here. And uh, please consider checking out my Patreon. You might like it or you might hate it. You also get, everyone gets their name on the door. And obviously that's the coolest thing ever. So in permanent marker. Okay. <laughs> if you want, please do. If you don't want to, don't worry about it. There's a link in the description of every vlog. Probably not in this video, but if you go to my last vlog and you haven't seen it, it's a great vlog. And then after, check it out if you want. If you don't want to, I appreciate you just being here. All right. I will see you guys later, and if you're on Patreon, I'll see you in a minute. Goodbye.